Hello everyone, Jackie here with Enjoying Life's Journey. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to our 2019 budget. We are going to be budgeting out the year. Happy New Year, everybody. I cannot believe 2018 is already over. I'm going to show you kind of how I plan out for the year. If you guys have been following the channel, you see that I do budget videos every single week. I budget out our paychecks. I budget out the month. But I also budget out on a yearly basis. And I even have an estimate of the next, you know, five years or so. And so you might be asking yourself, why should we budget out um, the entire year? Why should we budget a couple years out? And the real reason is that things change all the time. Obviously, we can't predict the future. It's a good idea to have some type of a plan, some type of a vision, and see, and then you can make changes along the way. So what I mean by things change all the time is that, you know, we have life changes. Like for us, you know, we bought a house that changes our finances. You might be having a baby, you might be getting married, you might be moving as well. You might be doing these things, you might have a child who is no longer going to be in daycare and now they're going to be in school. You have all these different expenses that can change from year to year. And then you also have expenses that change from month to month. Like you might have a bill that's due once a year. You might have something that's due every quarter. One example is with the electricity. Usually you spend, you know, a different amount in electricity during the winter months versus the summer months. So these are the reasons you want to budget a new budget every year and every month to kind of predict or to see what some of these things are going to be. We have a few things going on that we know ahead of time, so we want to make sure we're, we're planning for those. Uh, and then also my husband is getting, uh, he got a raise. All right, so when we're planning out our year, so you can see if, if you follow my monthly budgets, my weekly budgets, I have all of the same categories listed on the side here, but instead of having each individual paycheck up here, like I normally do for the month, I have the entire year. Uh, the ones with these asterisks are indicating months where my husband has five paychecks instead of four paychecks. So my husband gets paid every Friday. So that's a good way for us to look ahead is just to look how many Fridays are in the month, and then I know right off the bat. So what I typically do is we will create one budget for our four-week month, and we will create a new unique budget for our five-week month. Then we go in and tweak specific months that have things like car registration or car maintenance or things like that that we know are going to be on a different time frame. You know, we will adjust for our summer months and our winter months when we're doing electricity. So our first thing here is the pay. Now, January, I'm not going to budget for January using these numbers yet because, you know, they have signed the paperwork. This is going to be his new amount. However, that first paycheck in January may not have the new amount in there um, and it may not have the full overtime yet. So we're going to, I'm going to wait on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to budget out February and our four week month and I'm budget, budget out March uh, with you guys and then I'll come back once I finish doing the rest of the year here. My husband's pay before taxes. $18.50 an hour. His base pay is 40 hours a week. So for the four for the four check month, he, we're looking at $2,960. And then for the five, we're looking at $3,700. Now, overtime, they, they're bringing back overtime. So last year, you know, he had overtime every single month. Some months were a little less than others. Most of the time, they get about 10 hours of overtime. Sometimes they will get, you know, 18 hours of overtime. So we're going to just do it at the base, 10 hours of overtime. And again, as you see, we go through our month every single month so I can make adjustments. So 2775 times 10. Our four week is 1110 and our five week is 138750. Okay. What I'm doing is I'm putting in all of our income and then we are going to budget out the rest of the budget and we're doing every dollar budgeting, zero based budgeting. So we're telling everything where to go. For myself, this is my business, basically self-employment. I pay myself half of what I make. There's really no way that I can I can't estimate uh, that great amount of what I'm doing. You know, I am a travel agent, so I don't get paid until my clients travel. So I do know I will probably have a commission job somewhere in June for this year. Um, and so far, that's all I can foresee for that. Uh, and then the rest of the months, you know, I have the ad revenue for my YouTube channel. And then I try to work Instacart. Instacart has not been working out lately. They are extremely 
low on hours because of the holidays. And now that my husband is back on overtime, really the only day that I can get hours that I'm available for hours is on Sundays. So we're just going to say 150 um, a month for those base months here. So we'll say I make 300 over there, so I'll bring over 150. Gift cards, bonuses, these are things, you know, these are going to fluctuate. So if you have, if you normally get some kind of gift cards, you know, around your birthday or the holidays, then you could look at that. Uh, Ricky, they are actually going to be getting a work bonus, he said, in February. So I'm just going to open it up. We still really don't know um, the amount or for sure the date, but I'll open it up just so I have an idea. Same thing, you know, usually around my birthday, my dad usually gives me something. Uh, and then Christmas, we usually get gift cards or something. Same thing with interest and cash back, we do get this on a monthly basis. And then federal and state tax refunds we know come in in February. So we're going to open those up. So I open up where I think things are going to happen. Right? So now coming down into our taxes and and paying ourselves first. Ricky's 401k for 2018, we did 3% before taxes. We increased it to 5% for the new year. So we're trying to increase it every year and the goal is to get it up to 10%. Uh, 5% before taxes, so we look at, now. so not looking at my amount, but looking just at my husband's amount. 203 and 50, and 254, 37. Now this is including overtime. So they do 5% on all of the income that he work, that he makes. So that's what that is as well. Basically what we did for taxes, I looked at last year, uh, I looked at one of the pay subs and roughly we we paid about 11.11% worth in taxes this year. So I went ahead and just rounded it up to 12% and I, I looked at the each individual thing. So I actually wrote down. So when you're doing your budget, obviously you're going to need your calculator and any note taking you might need to do. So for taxes, we're looking at uh, federal, we're looking at 6013. Arizona, Medicare, and okay, so this is the percents of taxes after the 401k comes out because that is tax de deductible. Uh, so these again are estimates. So as we get the actual paychecks and we see a better idea, we'll know, but this is just estimates and long term disability, those come out of my husband's paychecks automatically. So family life insurance, it's five fifty nine a paycheck. That'd be twenty two thirty six and twenty seven ninety five. A long term disability, this fluctuates with pay. So I'm just gonna say three seventy three. So there's a few things that I look at. Like I said, one, Ricky and I sat down. We actually discussed some of the numbers we thought would be good for the next year. The other thing was I looked at last year, 2018, and I took into consideration how much did we actually spend uh, in those areas. So for instance, you know, how much did we actually spend in groceries? How much did we actually spend in gas? And I divided it up between the 12 months to get a more accurate number of what we're actually spending. Same thing with our fund category. Because what happens is you guys see me, I change the budget all the time, and then I come back and I'm like, man, I went way over budget in this area because I'm not being realistic of how much we're actually spending. So there's a, a few key areas I went ahead and took into consideration. Other thing is I would like to be able to follow T. Hart Eggert's percentages for the budget. He wrote the book, The Secrets to a Millionaire Mind, and he recommends that you put 10% into your financial freedom bucket, 10% into your long-term savings bucket. Now this could be spent for anything, so emergencies, a new car, whatever. 10% into your personal development, which is your education, however you follow that education. 5% uh, for giving, 55% for your necessities, your everyday bills, and 10% for fun. So this year, we're going to try to stick to those percents. Originally, with the emergency fund, you know, our goal is to have $12,000 by the end of the year. We would have to save $766 a month for that to happen. When I sat down with my husband and we talked about different categories, about how much we wanted to budget in those categories, and then I looked at last year and I averaged everything out, realistically, that is not going to happen. So for me, our bare minimum is we need to be saving 10% for that, okay? So we're going to try to stick to the T. Hart Eggert's 
uh, percents this year and see how that goes. Our financial freedom bucket is my husband's 401k and paying off our mortgage, okay? So we have 5% going to my husband's 401k. So we would technically be putting about 5% into what we call our extra principal payment here. We went ahead and just put uh, a set amount for the entire year to make it easier. So we're gonna put 175 in there. I've already set this up as an automatic withdrawal. So the first of the month, our mortgage payment and our extra principal payment get taken out. Uh, those who have followed, I have shown in a previous video how we plan off paying off the house early. You can look at your own personal amortization schedule and it shows you how much you're paying, how much of your monthly payment goes to interest and how much goes to your principal. So you can just look ahead and say, okay, I'm going to make one extra principal payment. That number, it gradually goes up. Your interest payments are real high, your principal is real low, and it gradually is changing. So as you're going, you'll see that number gradually going up. So when we first started our mortgage payment, one extra principal payment was maybe $148. Last month, it was about $152. So I just looked at the schedule, and I looked over the next two years, and I said, okay, what's the highest that payment is going to get up to for my my next two years of payments? And it was about $174 and some change. So that's how I came up with my number. So I did $175. So we'll actually be paying off one extra year worth of payments, plus maybe a few months you know, just by making an extra 175 a month. Once we get other things where we want them, we'll increase that. But for this year, we're going to go ahead and just do 175 across the board. So there, that equals out pretty much our first thing, our financial freedom number of our, our 10%. So our second one, our long-term savings, which right now is our emergency fund. So we want to do 10% into there. So 10% um, after the taxes would come out, for this would be 362, and this would be 480, roughly. Okay, we're just going to round. It could be some change in there, but we're going to round it. Okay, so that's how much we're going to do for emergency. On my husband, his personal money, which would be his personal development money or whatever, we just kinda, we had been doing about a hundred and a hundred dollars a month. But if I look. I can see how much he actually spent. Let's see. He actually spent closer to 146 a month if we were to do that. Uh, and if we wanted to go ahead and put him at, say, 5%, um, let's do, you know, we're not going to do the full 10%. What we were originally doing was 5% was for my personal development and 5% was for his personal development. However, my business account is now for my personal development. So we're just going to do my husband. And this would be 225 if we did 5%. So I might want to put here and say, okay, we're doing 10% here. We're doing 5% here. This is 5%. This is just so we, we know what we're doing. Extra principal mortgage is one extra. All right, so now let's get into our regular necessities here. Our mortgage is the same, right? Um, for pretty much the life of our loan until we get rid of our private mortgage insurance, which is $62. So for now, that's what our mortgage is. So we're gonna go to the actual bills that we know the, the amount. So my husband is 30, his phone is 35. My cell phone is paid for through the business. So I have a whole separate budget and a whole separate bookkeeping software and everything for my business because it's it needs to be your business, your personal, your self-employment, your business income needs to stay separate from your personal household income, your or budgets. The business pays for our internet, which is about $67 a month, and it pays for my cell phone, which is $30 a month. But that's, like I said, that's over there, in case you're wondering, because I don't have it on here. Car insurance is $122.13. Now, this could change uh, around June or July. So that's when our thing renews, and a lot of times they reevaluate the area and how many claims they've had in the area. So last year, let me show you last year real quick. So for 2018, you know, our insurance was about 95 and then it went up to 122. So we'll see what this year is. Hopefully it goes down and not up, but for now it's just, it's going to be the 122 across the board. Uh, the motorcycle insurance is 21.16. Okay. So now the next thing we're at are some of the, the things that change. So uh, our giving, like I said, we're going to try to do the 5%. Like T. Harv Eggert says, so we're going to do the 180 and the 225. Groceries. Now, we originally were doing $10 a day. Last year, we were trying to budget out $10 a day. Uh, but if I go back and look at last year, 
go back here at groceries and I look at how much we spent for the year, you know, 4068 and I divide that by 12, we actually spent more like $340 a month. And I was trying to budget way under that and we were always going over budget and I was like, oh, we keep going over budget. So you have to kind of go back and look and see what's the real numbers. So we're going to do, uh, we're actually going to just, we're going to shoot for $12 a day. And so that would actually be 336 for the four. So that I think is a good number for us. I think we'll stay on budget this time uh, by doing that. I think that will be a good number. This one was our electricity. So right now our electricity is a uh, our last bill was about 60 something dollars. So we're going to say um, 70 for these two months. However, as we get into July, August, and May, it's going to go up. So our highest electricity bill in the summer was 180. So I'm going to budget 180 as our highest electricity bill. Um, water, sewer, trash. Our last bill was $71.25. So I'm just going to budget $72. Next one is gas. So we have gas for the car and we have gas for the motorcycle. I normally don't separate this out, but I decided to go ahead and start separating it out. Now this is gas for our every day, every normal week routine. If we do travel, if we decide to go camping, go to the lake, go, you know, California, whatever, that will that gas would be coming out of our fun money, not our regular gas money. Okay. Last year we attempted to do you know, 140 for four weeks and 160. When I went back and I looked at the overall month, we actually spent closer to 160, an average of 160 every single month. So I'm actually going to start my base around around there. So let me see. Um, when I sat down with Ricky, we kind of just said, okay, how much are you actually using motorcycle gas? He fills up about every other day when he's working. So three or four times a week. And it's, you know, about $5 and some change. So we're just going to say uh, for my husband's motorcycle, like $6 times four days. So we're going to say uh, 96. So we can just round that to, we'll just round it up to 100. Say two Phillips, so 60 for the car. All right, so that's kind of what we're going to do for that one. So let's go ahead and we're going to round it. We're going to do this one, 120, get half a tank, so 75 for that okay and again this could this could change but I think I'm budgeting a little extra from what we had before so I think we will be good we're gonna our girls commission jobs we pay them their age every week well my daughter will turn eight in February so she'll be eight pretty much the whole year my youngest won't be five until August so we're gonna say it'll be 32 so those are their commission jobs. They have chores that they can do every week to earn it. Uh, they can spend half of it. The other half, we're teaching them how to save it and use it to give. So for my youngest, that's four. It's going to be 16, 20, 25. That's where it's going to start changing. Okay, so let's come down to fun. So we're going to change this. We have eating out. We are going to change this to uh, movies. Normally, we just put our budget in the events, and we kind of just spend it willy-nilly right we're actually going to plan some stuff out this year um, because it's going to help some of our values so we're going to have movies so we're going to do movies with the girls every month and then we are going to have a date night once a month as well i'm going to add one in here ymca the ymca is so, so that we can start working out that also that allows us to have they do once a month, the third Friday of every month, they do the parents' night out. So they watch your kids from 5 to 9 and provide them pizza and things, and you can go do a date. <laughs> so we decided that we're going to we're gonna start actually making this a priority for us. So that YMCA family membership is $70 a month, and this is for the whole family. So every anyone can go take classes here, get the parents' night out, and they include two hours of daycare. So if I want to go to a class, I can put my kids in the daycare so I can go to a class. Uh, and then date night, uh, my husband and I said we're going to just plan for $100 for date night. We'll see how that goes. Movies, so we said we're going to do at least one movie with the girls a month, so we're going to budget $40 for that. And then eating out, we decided we're just going to do like $25 a week. Um, specifically for that. So this would be a hundred and then we'll do 125. We have Netflix also. 873. They said our goal is to do 10% for fun or close to it. Okay, so we saw here, you know, 10% would be 362. So I actually have 43. So we're gonna put into it, we're gonna start putting in our vacation funds. So 4327. This one is 480, 136. 
seven. Wait, we're we're gonna start enjoying our money more and not stressing about it. If we go back, if I go back to 2018, you know, actually divide all this up. Let me see. We have actually spent about 320 a month. If you were to take everything that we had and we divided it up, spending a little bit more, you know, 315. We have 675. We have 205 and 560. Personal care, household, and different maintenance things. Okay, so let's see. We took 315 by two, 157. So we're gonna say. We're gonna put it in personal care and household for this one. Okay. Um, this one because it's um, quite a bit higher. We're actually gonna put. We're gonna open up some car maintenance and home maintenance. So we'll stick to our 150. We'll just round it to 160 to make it easier for those. Two divided by two. So be one. We're just gonna say 180. And then uh, it's 175. Do what's left divided by two. So we'll do maintenance of 87. See how I'm doing this? Like I'm accounting for things that we know are going to be, that we're going to need to make sure we have money put aside for. February, we are going to be getting a, a refund from, uh, and Ricky's going to be getting a bonus. So the tax refund most likely is going into the vacation fund to cover our cruise. We have a cruise in May. Okay. Also in February, we're going to have my husband's motorcycle tags are due. In December, the car tags are due. So we'll want to make sure we um, change that in that budget here. So, you know, my husband's yearly anniversary is in April, so there's a good chance he may be getting, a, he might get another raise in April. We don't know. It may just do it at the beginning of the year for everybody and just keep it simple like that. Commission job, I'll probably get in June, so that might change. And then January is going to be slightly different, like I said, because we might have some, some hours without this pay here. So I'm going to finish up this right here. I'm going to finish all this up, and then I will come back and show you what the finished product looks like for the rest of the year. All right, you guys, so this is somewhat finished product. Like I said, this is always a working document, but what I've done, I've added a few things in here. Like I said, we're estimating our federal tax. Like I said, that's just an estimate. Um, I went ahead and put January in based off of basically, or I'm doing one week without my husband's pay raise, uh, what I'm expected to bring over because we kind I have a better idea for the month of January. I also added June, uh, you know, adding in my commission that I'm either going to get in June or July. So I added that in. Everything else is just estimate for myself. Again, these are all we don't know for sure. So we're just going to have to wait. My husband's motorcycle registration, we added that. So I just took it out of the maintenance, what we originally budgeted for maintenance. I went ahead and put it in for the registration. Same thing with the car. Car registration, I went ahead and put it, I took out that amount from the maintenance and just put it for car registration. That's what I changed there. Uh, the tax refund here, I've put down into the vacation amount here. Girls commission jobs here. I did based off of their age before their birthday. I made sure that changed after my daughter's birthday. And then the biggest thing I changed here was the uh, electricity. So you can see I have 70 and then I bump it up to 90 and then I did our highest month 180 down to 90 down to 70. So this is kind of the way it can fluctuate through the year. Again, those are estimate numbers. Everything is accounted for. I can kind of, we have a better idea of what for the year and month to month. So then when I go to budget, you know, January and the future months, I have a better idea. I have a starting point of what it is that we're trying to do. Again, I went off of a few things. One, I went off of what did we actually spend last year and I divided it up between the 12 months to get a better idea of what we're actually spending and budgeting appropriately for that. I went off of our goals of, you know, having a few of the percentages line up with the Secrets of Millionaire Mind. Uh, and then also items that my husband and I decided that we are going to add into the budget this year, like date night and the YMCA and things like that. So join me every month and we'll see how the month plays out according to what we originally budgeted. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.